Hello everyone, this is Yanis with Reverica and in this video we're going to talk about a new project uh, that was initiated called Flus, a streaming storage layer built for real-time analytics and in particular we're going to discuss here how we can optimize the streaming analytics with Apache Flink and Flus. But before we start, an important thing to understand is why we do what we do. And here we can see uh, a bunch of use cases we can actually implement with uh, stream processing and real-time analytics. Data moves fast, so modern businesses set more strict requirements for streaming and real-time analysis of events. Delays in spotting trends or detecting anomalies can mean missed opportunities or costly mistakes. In short, we do what we do um, in order to enable our users with a better experience by capturing data as it's generated and immediately convert it into actionable insights. So for example, banks can intercept fraud the moment it happens, manufacturers can predict machine failures before they cause downtime, and e-commerce sites can provide personalized recommendations for shoppers in real time. By helping businesses to act on the speed of data, we help them stay agile, competitive, and better equipped to serve their customers. That's why we do what we do, because when every second matters, timely insights are important. And you can also see it from this graph here that uh, depicts the value of data over time. And this is in particular for data analytics, because we have the traditional lake house, but delays there are typically uh, larger. So we wanted we started going more into the near real-time lake house direction, but still there was a missing piece when it comes to millisecond and second level latencies. And this is why uh, a real-time streaming storage was actually needed. Let's try and unpack this and understand, better understand what all these things mean. So Flink is the de facto standard for stream processing and real-time analysis. And in simplest form, it's all about consolidating events from multiple sources, correlating and analyzing all those events to make sense of them and derive real-time insights and actions. And Flink provides a variety of APIs that allow lots of flexibility from the low-level data stream API to the Flink SQL API. And if we notice Flink SQL here and the syntax, uh, the way we interact with Flink, we can see that because it's SQL, it feels like we're interacting with a database. Moreover, Flink has the concept of the stream and table duality. A stream can be considered a change look of a, of a, of a table and basically keeps track of all the changes that take place and if required, it can be replayed to reconstruct the table to its later state. And table, on the other hand, is a materialized result of the change log on a key. So if you think about it with Flink SQL and the stream table duality, we can realize Flink has all the properties that resemble a database. We have tables like a database, we have a SQL layer, and we have a change log, which is like the database wall for streaming and keep track of all the changes uh, that take place there. The problem though is that unlike database, Flink misses storage. These tables and query results are not physically stored somewhere and cannot be queried by other processes or engines. And typically what we have to do, especially when we have, when we have been creating streaming first architecture, is that we had to stitch multiple systems together to consume and write events back and forth, for example, in Kafka or integrate with some OLAP system like ClickHouse or Starrox to run queries on fresh data. This also resulted in duplicating storage since Kafka cannot be queried directly, right? Which brings us to the first um, limitation, let's say, uh, we were observing in streaming analytics. One of the pain points there uh, when talking about streaming storage and real-time al analysis is that for years Kafka has been used to power the streaming first architectures. But since Kafka was designed for streaming the events and it does an excellent job there, uh, it was not designed for streaming analytics. 
and it works with topics storing the immutable log. The log in those topics can be consumed and is replayable, but it cannot be queried directly. For example, if errors in data are introduced from upstream systems, you can run uh, lookup queries and fix the malformed records. Or for example, if you want, let's say, if we take a real life example, if you want to delete uh, some records due to GDPR reasons, well, there are a few workarounds there, but still the, uh, it is hard to achieve these things. The other thing is that um, if we go back to the log, Kafka itself doesn't produce a, a complete changelog. This means that while consuming events, Flink needs to introduce a special operator to normalize the changelog, resulting in heavy states that need to be stored and kept around. And to better understand this, this is the way it works. The generated changelog is not shareable across jobs. This means that if we want to consume uh, the same topic from multiple jobs that run different operations, this changelog gets generated again and again, and as you can see in the image here, it results in redundant storage costs and heavy state use. So in reality, we have been missing for a long time a columnar streaming storage, and at the same time, row-oriented streaming storage like uh, Kafka or Pulsar, for example, might pose some limitations when it comes to real-time analytics because these systems, again, were created for streaming the events, not analyzing them. So in order to account for such limitations and uh, make Flink work more like a database and overall bring a streaming storage to the industry, to the, industry Flus, uh, the Flus project was created. And the first thing you will notice uh, in Flus is that here we play with what uh, analytical workloads work best with. And this is tables and not topics. So basically we go from topics and partitions to tables and the concept of buckets, um, which is similar to partitions. And just for reference, Flus here starts for the German word river. So let your data flow through Flus. Now, similar to Kafka, Flus has a log store for storing the immutable log, but compared to Kafka, it can generate a complete change log. At the same time, to account for the tables, Flus has a key, key value store, which stores the latest value for each key. So if we go back to our discussion about the stream and table duality, with Flus, we have both streams basically the log and the tables within the same system and similar to a database the, the log or wall can be used to reconstruct the full state of the key value store if required so by having tables instead of topics the key value store and the log store we get real-time streaming razor rights in low latency like kafka while also we have support for real-time updates lookup queries to look up data and if required for data inspection and debugging and all those things in real time and of course we also get the stream table duality within the same system the change look uh, as we said is generated once in flus and can be directly resumed uh, reused across different jobs so you can see how it's different from kafka uh, in this image and as you can also notice um, we get better performance and reduced uh, storage cost only due to the lower state that is being uh, required to be kept around and be used. Moreover, when working with, with systems like Kafka, the biggest costs come from networking because it is requ also required to transmit the whole row even if we only need to operate on a small amount of data basically a small amount of columns which is actually really true uh, in streaming analytics because for example in alibaba um, it was seen that in more than 20,000 Flink sql jobs almost 50 percent of the columns were not actually used but still the whole row needed to be transmitted flus is a columnar streaming storage it is based on the apache arrow project 
which is a columnar storage for zero copy data exchange and in memory processing. With Arrow, you can stream and read and write Arrow batches. So, for example, uh, we can write multiple Arrow batches into one big log file like one gigabytes or two gigabytes and then close that file and move to the, the next, which is also called segment similar to Kafka. We also get column pruning during reads, so only the required columns need to be read. This also leads to better throughput, as you can see in the image here, since less data needs to be transmitted over the network. So this is also some of the other benefits that columnar stream brings us. Next, uh, let's talk about uh, the curse of streaming joints. And it's all about data enrichment. And I call this the curse of streaming joints in a humorous way, because um, if you think about it, Streaming joints are so useful and one of the most common use cases, uh, especially in the context of Flynn. But at the same time, it's really tricky to get them right, especially at scale. We have large uh, and redundant states that need to be kept around. And although you can configure TTL, which stands for time to live, to control state sizes, this can often lead to inconsistencies if for whatever reason the expired state uh, is required and asked again because it's not going to be there anymore. Moreover, at scale, it might result in poor scalability or you might run into infinite state problems and overall there is difficulty in data correction. So how can we do better with flus? And the first thing to that is partial updates. Partial updates is about merging multiple streams together based on the same uh, primary key and you can think of it as a long row uh, in a database like filled with nodes and every time a stream comes that holds a specific column it partially updates uh, its columns and the end result when all the streams have written to it will be the expected end result so let's look at it with an example we have here so here we have three streams uh, it's describing a set of columns uh, from the end full row that we have so basically let's assume that stream one comes at, at uh, t1 then stream three comes at t2 and stream two comes at t3 you can see that while each stream arrives it partially also updates the value but in the end we have the full row result so first stream one comes and updates its corresponding columns here then stream, th st uh, stream three comes and uh, updates its corresponding columns here and finally with, uh, with stream two that is also the last stream we get the full result without having to maintain any states or do some heavy processing there the other one is about uh, streaming lookup joints and flus provides high performance streaming lookup joints and you can use it uh, to join an input data stream with a dimension table to get the information from that. And the other new and interesting thing that comes is the delta join. Delta joins is a new type of join that now with flus we can also get on Apache Flame. Compared to streaming joins that require uh, large states to be persisted, delta joins leverage indexes for lookups and remove the need for those states. So from the first POCs that were run, these are the results you can see here. So basically with uh, streaming joins, uh, 50 terabytes of large state required to be kept around, but when introducing data joins, it eliminates all those 50 terabytes where they were not uh, required anymore. You can see the resources were saved by more than 10 times. So it went from, uh, 2,300 compute units to just 200 compute units. The bug filling with Lakehouse uh, tech and bad joins went from four hours to half hour. And overall, there was it provides better flexibility and makes state data more accessible. And uh, all this work is being open sourced. Everything is uh, in place on the flu side. It just requires uh, this flip here to be implement on the Flink side, it will probably come, uh, I believe, in Flink uh, 2.1 or 
So moving forward, we also have by design a streaming lake has unification. Um, there is also a design doc in the open source if you care to take a look, but pretty much Flux uh, has a built-in tiering service that allows to offload and convert all your Flux tables into lake house tables uh, automatically. You can think of it uh, like a, a built-in lake house tier storage, for example. And currently Apache Paimon is supported. And next, uh, it's come, uh, support for Iceberg is coming and then for all the other table formats. And this native integration uh, brings quite a few benefits like the automatic conversion uh, back and forth between Flux and Lakehouse tables, improved timelines for the Lakehouse, for table formats, and there is a blog post around that goes into more details uh, around it that you can find on the Flux um, website under the blog session. And that particular one with, is with Apache Paimon, but some of the principles apply to the other table formats. But an important aspect here is the combination of historical and real-time data that allows you to create uh, hybrid sources via what is called the union reads. And with union reads, historical data is stored in the lake house and real-time data is stored in flus. And in batch reading scenarios, computing edges uh, like Flink can perform union reading of data in flus and lake house storage to achieve the analysis of data freshness in seconds. So for example, as you can see here, when we run a query, we have our uh, data in the lake format and all that data is also combined with uh, real-time data that has been also written in flus. And via this union read, we have the end result um, with the latest uh, records in our end result. So this is what union reads is useful for. And basically, this is an overview of the whole uh, picture of Flux as a streaming storage for real-time analytics. So this was an introduction to help um, people realize what we see as the next generation, let's say, of streaming analytics and how Flux and Flink together can help you deliver and optimize better streaming analytics. So thank you for watching. I, think, I, th I hope you found this useful. And don't forget to start the project uh, on the GitHub repo if you like it. And if you want to get involved, just reach uh, out to us directly. Thank you.